The last part of this section is variance analysis. Variance analysis looks at what actual costs or revenues turned out to be and why, and what can be done if the actual figures have varied a lot. Now we've got two types of variance, there's favourable and adverse. Favourable for costs means the actual costs are lower than budgeted costs, and adverse is the opposite, when actual costs are higher than budgeted costs. For a sales revenue or a profit budget, favourable means actual revenue or profit is greater than budgeted revenue or costs, and adverse means that actual revenue or profit is lower than budgeted revenue or profit. Now, in the exam, you could be asked to work out what the variance is, why it occurred, and what to do about it. First of all, we'll look at how you work out the variance. It's easier if we use some figures. So, if you look at this table, you can work out if the variances are adverse or favourable. OK, so as you can see, the first one is sales revenue. The budgeted figure was £500, and the actual figure was £600. Now, this gives a variance of £100 favourable because the company gained more revenue than they expected to. Wage costs next. You can see that planned costs were £100, but the actual wage costs were only £90. That gives a variance of £10 favourable because their costs were lower than they expected them to be. The final one is material costs. The budgeted figure was £200, whereas the actual figure was £300. So that gives a variance of £100 adverse, because they had to spend more money on materials than they planned to. From this table, you could work out the profit variance. Remember that profit is sales revenue minus costs. So let's have a go at working it out using our table. Budgeted revenue was £500, and total budgeted costs of wages and material costs added up to £300. So £500 revenue minus £300 costs gives a budgeted profit of £200. The actual revenue was £600, and actual total costs of wages and materials came to £390. So £600 minus £390 gives us £210. Therefore, the variance is the actual profit of £210 minus the budgeted profit of £200, which gives us a profit variance of £10 favourable. Why don't you have a go? Pause, get a paper, pencil, and work out what the variances are, and then work out the overall profit variance. Here's the table. How did you get on? Let's go through it and see how you got on. For sales revenue, you should have got a £1,000 favourable variance, which is the difference between the actual and the budgeted figures. For rent, the variance is £500 adverse, because the firm had to spend £500 more than planned. For labour, it's £500 favourable, because they thought they'd spend £4,000 on labour, but only spent £3,500. And for raw materials, the variance is £500 adverse, because they were higher than planned. To work out the profit variance, you first need to total the costs and take them away from the revenue. You need to do this for the budgeted figures and the actual figures. So budgeted costs of rent, labour and materials were £10,000. Now this taken away from the £12,000 revenue gives us a budgeted profit of £2,000. For the actual figures, total costs came to £10,500. This, taken away from £13,000 revenue, gives us £2,500. So, the difference between the two profit figures is £500. And because it's more than the budgeted figure, for a profit, it's favourable. You should be OK with calculating variances now. Once you've worked out variances, you might have to consider why they occurred and what to do about them. This really depends on what the variances are and whether they're adverse or favourable. 
For example, adverse cost variances can occur if the price of raw materials goes up, or if workers' demands pay rises, or even if rent goes up. Favourable or adverse variances for sales revenue can be down to more or less people buying your products, which in turn may be down to things like their disposable income or what competitors are doing. What you do about adverse variances depends on why they occurred. For example, adverse material costs could be improved by finding cheaper suppliers, or adverse wage costs could be improved by reducing the workforce. Of course, you'd have to discuss the consequences of such actions for the examiner. Why not have a go at this exam question and see how you get on? We'll use Chris's surfboard business so you can get application marks. Let's imagine that Chris is now facing a new competitor and it's starting to have an effect on his sales. Here's the question. Spend about six minutes on it. Analyse two courses of action that Chris could take to overcome an adverse sales revenue variance. Right, you might have written something like this. An adverse sales variance means that Chris budgeted for higher sales revenue than he actually achieved. Now this means he's not selling as many surfboards as he planned. To improve the situation, he could promote his business more perhaps using specialist surf magazines or advertising in local newspapers. Although this means he'd have to spend money in the short term and increase his costs, he may increase interest in his products enough to increase sales and therefore sales revenue. Alternatively, he could lower his prices. Now this will increase sales if demand is price elastic, and given that the new competitor may have high startup costs, they may not be in a position to retaliate. See how the answer explains what the variance means and comes up with two solutions that are related specifically to Chris's situation. See also how the consequences of the two solutions are discussed. An answer like this would get good content, application and analysis